I see you, Lauren. Lauren is watching. Hello, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There's Bonita. Hello, Bonita. Hi, Sean. Hello, Mama Mary. Hello, Sherry. Thanks for praying for me. Chauncey, thank you. I see you, Chauncey. The Jenkins crew. Hello, Chantel. Thanks, Chantel. Hello, Van, Vanny Van. Hello. Praise the Lord. I see you. Hello, Alicia. There's my Alicia. I see you, Bonita. I love you too, Alicia. Hello, my prayer por partner. Hello, Joyce Robinson. Thank you, Joyce. I appreciate you. I know you're praying for me. Hello, Pastor Aaron. Hello, Sheila Miller. How are you? Live church family and all viewers. It's such a graceful privilege to be here this evening. I'm Yvonne Craig. I'm one of the speakers at the Live Church DFW. And certainly I, I need you to continue to come in to like so I'll know that that you're there thank you for coming in I see you Rhonda I'm thankful uh, to those that are here with me uh, my daughter Deborah who is here night and day to help me out I think I'm so thankful to Deborah much more than you know, Deborah. I see you, Joyce. I know my uh, daughter Sybil and son in love, Bakari, will soon be on. Uh, thank, I'm so thankful for all that that you do, Sybil and Bakari. To bring happiness and much joy in my life. 
thank you uh, to my son uh, and Pastor Aaron and Lady Stacy for coming over uh, to assist me. I'm grateful for all that you do to brighten my days and help my sleep to be sweet. I'm thankful for my children and, and my grandchildren. I tag them second to none. Hello, Faith. I, I see you, Faith. Continue to, to log in and let me say thank you to all to my prayer warriors, team prayer warriors, for praying for me. Thanks for all of your prayers. Please share and share again. We're looking for the church. And we're looking for the unchurch. Hashtag life up, com comment, start a watch party. We're waiting for at least 20 to log on. We have 25? Okay, so Pastor Aaron says we have 25. Um, so we'll begin. As I lift holy hands, I give all praises to my Lord and to my Savior Jesus Christ. I'm thankful to Pastor Aaron A. McCordell III for giving me the opportunity to share a word on Word Wednesday. Let us pray. O oh God Almighty, please, O oh God, right now, Bring me to the end of myself. God, speak through these lips of clay. As you release your word, I ask that you penetrate and massage the hearts of the listeners. Please, God, give us all peace in the midst of the pandemic. God, please speak through these lips of clay. This is your servant's prayer. Amen and amen. A global pandemic has been declared, bringing about chaos and uncertainties. But above the pandemic, above chaos, and above uncertainties, there is a word from God. So, let me make it strong and let me make it clear. Whether it's 9-11, whether it's Katrina, or whether it's Corona, my God speaks. And he speaks through his creation. My God speaks through what he allows. The question is, are you listening? 
Then I ask you, are you paying attention as God is speaking? Is Corona the evidence that we have insulted God? And that's why the world is reeling and rocking, shifting, shaking, and scared. Now, think with me. If that's true, there is a question. And the question is, where, where were you? And what were we doing? Other than talking and complaining when our God was being insulted. As he was removed from our schools, where were you and what were you doing? When the government took God out of our houses and our homes and, and, and the government began to tell us how to parent our children. And now, sadly, many of our children are misguided, they are confused, they're spiritually weak and definitely without a spiritual foundation. God was removed out of the workplace. God was removed from the arenas and it is a fact. You can lose your contracts if you take a knee to bow in prayer. Oh yes, it is a fact. We have used God for our blessings. And we have failed to serve God and obey him. Now can I go deeper? In some cases, he has been removed from his own house. And yes, sir, I'm talking about the church. And by the way, just in case you have forgotten, God says people were created to be loved. Things, get me now, things were created to be used. But we got it twisted because you love things. And you use people. Will you allow me to shift? My challenge this evening is to clearly unpack the life of Ruth and bring her life alive. Therefore, I invite you, Lauren, Sean, will you walk with me as we trace the steps of Ruth and explore the pandemic and chaos in Ruth's life while watching Ruth become strong, impressive, and the Lord's redeeming works. Ruth's life is obviously credible, and I'll tell you why. For out of 66 books in the Bible, there are only two books of females, and Ruth is one of the books. Now, if you will, hold on. I, I, I'm going to give you a scripture in a minute, but I, I, I just want you to allow me to set the stage. Are you with me? Ruth, a Moabite woman, 
believing in a God, little g, made of stone, but married into a God, capital G, fearing family. And what's absolutely more powerful, Ruth became an ancestor of King David and Jesus the Christ. On that note, ladies, it would be wise if you adhere to the life of Ruth. Are you with me? Ladies, let God's men find you. Regardless to how long it takes, don't settle for less than. Wait on God. No matter your past, wait on God. Marry into a strong family that's both rooted and grounded in the Lord. Alicia, will you continue to follow me as I set the stage? Sherry, you know, while facing an unprecedented famine in Judah, with little to no food and other insignificances, Elimelech took his wife Naomi and their two sons. They left their hometown and moved to a country called Moab. It was there in Moab. That Naomi's husband died. The sons married Moabite women, Opal and Ruth. They lived together for about 10 years and the sons died. Can anybody put their self in Naomi's place? your husband, your protector, your provider, the priest and head of your household dies. What pain and loneliness the death of a husband brings. But that's just the beginning of Naomi's pain. Her sons, not one, but both sons died. Jesus, I cannot imagine the hurt, and God knows I have prayed and asked him to take me long before he takes my children or, or my grandchildren. Naomi, Ruth, and Opal have no husband. The entire household is experiencing pandemic. They are bereaved. They are grieving. What do you do? And how can you go on? Three widows together. But yet each one of them felt all alone. I've been there. Not one time, but two times. And I've felt the pain. Emotions are under attack. Can't focus. Thoughts are, are cloudy. But you must hold on. I said you must hold on and you must go on. Naomi loved the Lord and 
and, and showed kindness toward her daughter-in-laws. But now Naomi's down. She's depressed. She's lonely with long sleepless nights. And there's no reason for Naomi to continue to live in Moab. She has no kinfolk there, no blood relatives. There's no reason, no family. So Naomi decides to go back home to Judah. And she had heard that the famine had ended in Judah. So Naomi called together her daughters-in-law. And they had a little round-the-table chat. And she said to her daughters-in-law, I am going back uh, to my home. And uh, Ruth, Opa, you go back to your own folk and your own gods. There's no need for you to follow me. Go back to your own mothers. Now, the stage is set. My scriptures, Ruth 1, 15 through 17, which invokes my title, the grace to new beginnings. I said the grace to new beginnings. According, hello Tisha, I see you. According to Ruth, 1, 15 through 17, as the story opens, Naomi says to Ruth, your sister-in-law Opal has gone back to her people and her gods. Ruth, go on. Stop following me, Ruth. I cannot provide for you. I, I have no more to give. Go, go, go back to your own people. And to your gods. With that said, this is what Ruth's loyal decision brings her to a lifetime reward. Point number one, loyalty. Ruth said to Naomi, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Ruth loved Naomi. Naomi, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, Naomi, I'm going to lodge. Naomi, your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Rachel, she said, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Now that's a defining point of true law. Now let me tell you something. Loyalty, and I want you to hear me clearly, Jarvis. For loyalty can take you to places far beyond where you can think or ask. Will you walk with me? As the journey begins from grave to grace to new beginnings. 
imagine Ruth and Naomi on foot walking to Bethlehem, Judah. Can anybody imagine that? I know everybody drive cars, but 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 no, they were on foot. Follow me now. Ruth and Naomi on foot, walking to Bethlehem, Judah. Can you see ten long, hot, steamy days? As the sun goes down, night drops like a heavy curtain, hiding everything. They walked through danger. Naomi and Ruth walked up mountains. They walked through rugged, rough, and steep terrains. Listen to me. And please believe me, you too, I'm talking to you from experience, you too can make it. When the sun in your life goes down and the night drops like a heavy curtain, you can make it, but only with the grace of God. Ruth put her life in jeopardy to stay close and help Naomi. Without thought of what was in it for her. So I ask you, where is your loyalty? To whom are you loyal? And what's your motive behind your loyalty? Is it what's in it for you? You be honest and examine yourself. Not your brother, not your sister, but you take a good long look at your heart and your mind. According to Ruth 2, Verse 3, which reads, And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, bringing me to point number two, a sincere spirit of servitude. When Naomi and Ruth reached Bethlehem, now, you know, after 10 days of, of walking uh, in, in, in the long, hot sun and, and in the darkness of the night, uh, now, you know, they, they were weary and tired. The pain in their backs and feet must have been on a scale way above 10. But Ruth more concerned about her mother-in-law than herself. Mm. Knowing Naomi is old, tired, and hungry. Ruth later goes to the field to glean grain to feed the household. Hear me now. To embrace a sincere spirit of servitude. To serve others takes courage. For it means you're putting your heart and yourself on the line to be broken and to be hurt, to be misused, abused, to be crushed. But by those that, that you're serving, those that you have given your all in all. Mm -hmm. 
sincere spirit of servitude, to serve others. Yes, it takes courage. But let me tell you something. You can smile. And I will tell you why. To be a servant of God and serving others is a blessing and will pay off with great rewards. Ask Sister Ruth. It was there in the field as Ruth gleaned the leftovers. It was there in the field that Ruth, while gleaning the leftovers, Ruth met Boaz, and Boaz offered Ruth protection and food. You know, I believe he was already taking a liking to Ruth, because she was a pretty young thing. Mm -hmm. So Ruth asked Boaz when he offered the, her protection and food, why a foreigner like me should receive such kindness? Mm -hmm. Well, Boaz said that he had heard of her loyalty to Naomi, her mother-in-law. And according to Ruth 2 and 12, Boaz pronounces a blessing on Ruth, saying, May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. And that brings me to point number two, Ruth's reward. Before Ruth could gain her reward, she had to be ready. She had to clean up from the floor up. She had to deal with her pains Ruth had to deal with her insecurities. She had to deal with her hurts, deal with her losses. And I just stopped by this evening to tell you, you got to deal with your stuff. It was around mid-March, maybe around the 23rd, God pressed pause, shut down and sheltered you in place that you may be still and know that he is God. Humbly come before him and deal with you. Grieve your loss. Let me make this strong for you. I said grieve your grave losses. Those losses that screams louder than any of your victories. You got to grieve the deaths, your childhood pain. But, but, but you can't keep living in it. You got to grieve it and get out of it. You got to grieve jobs that you've lost, house foreclosures. Do you know what I'm talking about? You got to grieve lost relationships. You cannot begin new beginnings until you put broken you and all the broken pieces of you back together again. Ruth facing a few more ups and downs because that's what life brings. That's life. She faces pan, a few more pandemics and chaos. 
from grave to grace. But look, look at what happens. A royal wedding takes place. Are you listening, Tisha? For Boaz married Ruth. Boaz is blessed with a godly and beautiful wife. And Ruth is blessed with a loving husband who is healthy. He's wealthy. He's wise and well established. But that's just the beginning of the highlights of what loyalty brings. What a sincere spirit of servitude establishes with a beyond life time reward. For Ruth was blessed with the son Obed. And Obed, Ruth's son, becomes the father of Jesse. Are you following me? And Jesse becomes the father of King David, rewarding Ruth directly, absolutely directly into the lineage, hallelujah, hallelujah, into the lineage of Jesus the Christ. <laughs> oh, my sisters and my brothers, you got to believe me uncategorically. Living a life of loyalty to others, a sincere spirit of servitude, will bring you rewards and will take you from grave, painful hurts, from disappointments, from letdowns, and from tearful, sleepless nights, and bring you all the way, all, all the way, to God's grace, to new, absolutely new, brand new beginnings. Thank you, Jesus. Live church and those that are not a part of the live church, I pray you've been blessed. Thank you for logging on to Word Wednesday. May God keep each one of you is my prayer. I'm signing off until next time. But I'm telling you, be loyal, serve others, and be Rewarded. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for speaking through my mother. Lord, right now, would you move in someone's living room? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Someone's bedroom. Someone's kitchen. Yes. Lord, would you move right now in someone's car? Yes. Father God, would you begin to touch their heart and just let them know that their yesterday yes, Lord is not Jesus. their tomorrow? Thank you, Jesus. Father, teach them right now that loyalty to you yes, Lord. is first and foremost. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, would you teach them to serve their brother and sister? Because, Lord, if we cannot love them, how can we love you? Yes, Lord, help us. And, Father, when it is all said and done, yes, after Lord. our hearts have been tied to yours, yes, Lord. through Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, yes, Lord. Lord, at that Jesus, point, Lord, Jesus. because of him, we Jesus, will see great Jesus. reward. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you so much. 
Yes, Lord. For speaking through my mother. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for touching those that heard her tonight. And, Lord, I pray that somebody shifts right now. Yes. <laughs> that they were going through something, but now they've learned that loyalty is their calling. Now yes. that they've learned that yes. servitude means that they have to keep going. Oh, now yes. that they've learned Hallelujah. that reward is theirs to have. Father, thank you. Lord, thank you so much for what you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I want to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> I want to be like her when I grow up. God bless you guys. We thank you so much for joining us. We love you. We love you. Until Sunday. Thank you, Mama. Thank Amen. you, Mama. Yes.